Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater, Run, Blog, Runs, your favorite program, Socialing the Distance. Today, we have a real treat. Uh, Shereen Richards, his nickname is The Dream. I saw that on some of the stuff, and we'll ask him about that later. But he is the 2017 uh, World Champ Gold Medals 4x4 with his team from Trinidad and Tobago. In 2018, he won the gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in the 200. Um, just set a national record for 150 meters at the Adidas Boost Boston meet. And we repeated that several times in front of a sponsor. And he's an Adidas sponsored athlete. Jareem, great to see you. Nice to see you too. I'm so glad to, to be here today. Cool. Now, have you worked out already today? Yeah, today for me was a really easy day. Um, just a shake out type of day to make you feel good and get ready for tomorrow. So yeah, I, I already did earlier. How um, on an easy day? How much time do you spend working out? Uh, roughly between forty five minutes to hour. Not much. Just get your body warm a little bit. Um, dynamic flex, maybe some hood, hood mobility, a few strides, and come back home. What about on a hard day? What's the session like? How long does it take? About maybe an hour and a half, a little bit more, because then you have to factor in time to rest. Um, you have to take more time to warm up because, I mean, on harder days, more, more than likely we go really, we run really fast and it's very intense. So you mm-hmm. take more time to warm up and um, you might need a little bit more time for rest in between um, those runs that we do. How long does it take you to warm up when you're on a hard day? On a hard day, um, regularly, hard day, easy day, it usually takes me about 45 minutes um, to get everything done. 45 to 50 minutes to get everything done. Maybe an hour, depends on um, depend on how my body feels and it reacts. But about, yeah, about 45 to an hour. How did the pandemic change the way you guys trained? Um, me personally, it changed a lot for me. It actually was a big influencer in me moving to um, the Adidas campaign in Claremont, Florida. Um, mm-hmm. I trained in the University of Alabama before, and before my outdoor campaign could have begun in 2020, I went back home and I got stuck home for eight months, and I was just home um, training in the streets at one point. Um, luckily, I, I lived near a hill, so I had that hill um, to train on also on some days it was hill on Monday, rest Tuesday, hill on Wednesday, rest Thursday, hill on Friday. Wow. Like some days it was just on the hill, um, until they opened up the stadium for, um, Olympic athletes. And then I had access to the stadium. Um, but how it affected me biggest, my biggest, um, the biggest effect that it had on me, um, the pandemic had was me moving to the Adidas camp where now I have the ability to train freely. Um, Florida has a lot of track meets, so I didn't really have to leave the U S to go, to go anywhere. Um, so yeah, it was, it was definitely a a good move for me in terms of being able to train, um, having a good group around me and being able to compete at the same time too. Um, can you give us the names of the folks you train with on a daily basis? Um, I train with the likes of Noah Lyles, Josephus Lyles, um, Wade Van Kirk, um, Kyle Giroux, also uh, my Trinidad and Tobago rival. Um, who else? Who else? Um, Alonzo Edwards. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so just a, oh, just a cool. few names. Nathaniel Mitchell Blake, also, I can't forget him. Jelani Walker and um, Raheem, Raheem um, Ford. Now, is coach there for all your hard days? Yeah, yeah every single day easy. Okay. Okay. What, um, what did he say after your one fifty? Uh, he, he was very happy. Um, specifically happy on, um, how I executed it. Um, that was something I was working on a lot. I'm not the, um, best starters. One, I'm not one of the best starters and especially in comparison to guys that actually do the hundred and, um, with it being one fifty and a straight, they would have the advantage for the first, the first part of the race. So I was just, you know, focused on executing um, my my dry phase. I'm staying low, staying consistent, and putting myself in a position for when I hit my best positions, which is getting up tall and accelerating once I build up that speed. Um, 
making sure I had to, making sure I was able to do that. And I focused in, I was able to execute it just exactly how I wanted to and came out successful. So, I mean, he was happy with it. I was happy with it too. How many races did you race this past winter? Um, counting the indoor season also. Yeah. Um, I opened up with a 200. Then I ran a one, uh, a 300. I ran prior to the 153, three, um, two hundreds. So the 150 would make six, I believe. Wow. I, okay. I also ran some hundreds here and there. So if I add in the two hundreds, the two 100 meters, um, yeah, that'll be eight. Well, in the two hundreds, I recall you were running against some 400 guys and you made them work pretty damn hard. And, uh, you looked pretty satisfied with that. Tell us about that 300. I thought that was a real good indicator of your fitness level. Did you feel good with that? Yeah, I was I was satisfied with it. Um, I have the record for that meet, which is uh, 32.10. Um, I was contented with trying to break that record also, which is also the national record of Trinidad and Tobago. But um, I was more so focused on um, execution also and just getting the win at that point. Um, because I hadn't run all 20, all 2020. So at this point, I was just trying to try to see where my legs are, see where my fitness is at, and more than in, most important, come up with a victory, whereas it could boost my confidence. And going forward, I could know what my gauge is and how strong I'm, I am and what I need to work on. So it, it, I was definitely satisfied with it. And um, yeah, I feel like I was in a good place at that point. And Compared compare to back then to now in my season, I feel like I'm in a really, really good place. When did you start working out with Coach Brownman? I started the beginning of off-season in 2020. So I moved here as soon as I left Trinidad to come back to the U.S. I um, went back to Alabama and I got myself and I um, moved. So I already made arrangements to move. So I started with them in um, the off-season of 2020. Where... So do you have a national championships or are you selected for a team for Tokyo? Um, sadly, we won't be having a national championships um, because the situation in Trinidad and Tobago is kind of really bad right now in terms of cases. Um, but I've already qualified and they have set um, a criteria of how they're going to pick their teams. Um, so basically, I want to believe it's obviously people that qualify in meets, they would have um, priority. Um, into qualifying for the Olympics. Um, yeah, I think that's how we're doing it. And your intention is to do the 200 and the 4x4? Four four? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, the 4x4, four four, you guys have done incredibly well. You've uh, beat the U.S. team on several occasions. Um and uh, while my heart's with the U.S. team, I also think you guys did, you guys were awesome, man. You know, and I, I've watched you uh, compete, uh, I think, four or five times now. And I remember interviewing you in London in 2017 after you won the relay. You were uh, you were pretty darn happy. You know, that your, your bronze medal there. Um, what's been the highlight of your career so far for you? Um. Definitely, I would say the bronze medal in World Championship was my biggest highlight because, I mean, I came into the World Championships in 2017 as an underdog. Not a lot of people knew who I was um, and how my body felt throughout that competition mentally and physically and spiritually. Like how I felt, it has been unmatched. I've never felt that in tune with exactly what I wanted to do ever um i feel like it was it like it weird but i felt like it was written like it was supposed to happen i went into that meet mentally physically spiritually knowing that knowing that i was supposed to get a medal there and i came out with two medals so um but the one that really is you know closest to me is definitely the bronze medal because it's, a, it's an individual medal and um i mean i worked very hard for that all season I had ups and downs in 20, 2017 season and definitely ended on a high note. So, you know, I'm very thankful for that. And 
it definitely is uh, my biggest highlight of my career. What is the toughest part of the 200 meters for you? The toughest part of the 200 meters for me sometimes it might be within the first, first 50 to 60 meters. Um, if I'm not able to set, set that part up the way I need to, sometimes it throws off my entire race. Um, so that might be my, my toughest part. Finishing, I'm, I'm a really strong finisher, so I'm not too, not too stressed out about finishing. Coming off the turn, I think I have that down pack also, but setting up that first, that first 50, 60 meters is very, very crucial for me. So I think that was, that was, that'll be like the hardest part or most difficult part for me. What is the part of the race that you have the most confidence in? You know, if you can get to there, you're going to do well. Um, that little sweet spot coming off the team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I feel like if I'm able to hit that, that's that sweet spot where you transition, um, the way I think I could hit it, if I if it, everything goes the way I think, I mean, it's all over coming off the turn. Because I feel like once I hit those positions coming off the turn just the right way, coming on the home straight is just a given. Like, I'm going to finish strong regardless of what. When you're running 200 meters indoors, what, what's, what's different about that race from racing? the half lap outdoors run, run, running 200 meters outdoors. What's um, the challenge for you? Indoors versus outdoors, one of the biggest challenges is one lane draw. Um, I prefer to chase and not be ch chased. Um, mm -hmm. So I would prefer ideal lane five, anything indoor, once you have to go around your track, I prefer lane five. So you have someone in front of you to chase. Um, one of the biggest differences too, um, you need to know how to hit certain spots on that track, hold your position. It really comes down to having a strong core and being able to hold the right positions because you're in a constant uphill, downhill battle and going around a turn at the same time at a slanted angle. So you have to be able to hold your, um, your body positions um, very, very well because it's not just going around a turn on a flat surface. Um, some people are really good in indoors. Some people are not, but um, I like indoors. I really like the indoor 200. Um, to me, it's, it's just right. And once you're in good shape, you could hit you could hit uh, both sides really good. Coming down the hill on the home stretch is going to help you out a lot and you would produce, um, produce fast times. Um, let's go to the four by four. Um, what leg do you like to do in the four by four? Second leg. Second leg has always been my favorite leg. Um, it's a fast leg. It's a short leg. I mm -hmm. feel like it's just right. Okay. Um, is there a difference running it indoors as opposed to outdoors? Um, it is, but to me, it doesn't feel like there's a difference. Um, I take it the same way I would take it outdoors. I'll always try to go out hot and put myself in the race if I'm not in the race or put myself away from the pack if I'm in front and hold on. I feel like sometimes when it comes down to four by four, I'm willing to sacrifice myself for my team. Um, I would expend a lot of energy early um, and just go off, feed off of the crowd, feed off of the will to win, um, just to put my teammate in a good spot. So he could put the last leg in a good spot so that we could do something special. Okay. Um, the, uh, if you were not going to be doing, okay, what field event would you do if you weren't a sprinter? Um, this is a difficult one because I actually used to do field events when I was younger. Um, okay. I used to do high jump. I stopped when I was under 17. Uh, my PR was one meter, 87 centimeters. Nice. Um, yeah, it wasn't bad actually. I was I was I was kind of good. Um I did long jump also, but I was I wasn't that good in long jump. So I probably would have been a high jumper. Um how did you get into track and field? Um when I was younger in primary school, probably uh standard one, I tried playing football. 
at that point in my life, I wasn't good in football. Um, I got better when I got older though. Um, I tried cricket. Um, I wasn't a good bowl, wasn't a, a good bowler. I uh, wasn't the best batsman, and I was terrible at catching. Like I was just outright terrible at catching the ball. Um, one thing I did realize though, I was faster than everyone in my class, and in all the standard ones, I was the fastest. So um, I ran at the zonal games in um, my hometown, which is all the schools in that hometown, they would come together and have a track meet. And I did well. And from there on, I always wanted to be a track and field athlete because it was actually something that I was really, really good at. And it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't hard for me. It actually came really natural. That's cool. Um, what's the workout that you do that you hate that tells you you're in great shape? Is there a workout that coach gives to you that you just go, you know, I'm going to puke. I, I, I'm just, yeah, I'm not going to feel good, but you know what? I'm ready to race. Do you have a workout like that? Um, there's no workout that I specifically hate that tells me that I'm in good shape, but there's workouts that I really like that tells me that I'm in good shape. Okay. Um, tell us about those. The workout that I really like that tells me that I'm in good shape is... 250, 150. So you run a fast 250, you come back within six to eight minutes and run a fast 150. That usually um that usually tells me I'm in good shape. And I actually really like workouts like that. Um because I like to challenge myself um to what I did prior and try to beat those times again next time I do it. So yeah, that's one of my favorite workouts. I love to do that one. What is the hardest part of that workout? Is it the coming back um in the 150 and just trying to push it yeah the definitely the hardest part is trying to come back and run a fast 150 after a fast 250 um because you feel like your body has enough energy to run again but it's just enough like you're recovered but it's just enough so now you have to and you might want to try to go past your limits you might want to you know mash the gas and mash some more and Sometimes, you, I mean, you might not have as much as you want, but it is what it is at that point. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, the uh, Do you have any more races coming up in the next uh, uh, month or so? Are you guys, are you going to Diamond League or are you uh, doing local events? Um, this month, since we're not having a trials, I believe that, the Bahamas, they have an open trials. So I'm definitely going to try to get some races in at their, their trials. Um, mm -hmm. And then we will go forward from there. I'm not sure about afterwards, but definitely I'm um, trying to hit the Bahamas trials so I could at least mimic mimic myself going to um, the Trinidad and Tobago trials in a sense, yeah. More than likely in Tokyo, it'll be stranger than any Olympics we've seen. Um, I've been to the last 10 and there are, there won't be 80,000 people in the stand shaking the stadium. It's probably going to be relatively quiet with those pretend, you know, clapping sounds and stuff. Um, how, does that bother you? Does that affect you? Or do you just, you're there for a race and you want to do that race well? Um, definitely doesn't affect me. Um, I'm going there for one one reason and one reason only, and that's to go and come back home with a medal. Um, and I already prepared myself mentally um, for there not to be any fans or not much fans there. The only people I, I'm assuming going to be there is, you know, track and field athletes or um, maybe if it have other people from other sports, there, which I think when you're done with your sport, you, they, they tell you go, to go back home. Um, but, yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm, and I'm teasing anticipating this and um you know i'm just going there for one mission and that's to get emails and yeah that's what i'm focused on so it shouldn't affect me but also um when i went to that um meet in boston the indoor meet and they had the the um you know the sound of the crowd which it was much people there it actually mimics very well the feeling of a crowd uproaring while you're running, people clapping, people cheering. Yeah. So that yeah. actually works very, very, very well. So, I mean, if they have that, then 
I mean, everything should be okay. Uh, next year, we have a, a World Champs in Eugene and a Commonwealth Games. Will we see you competing in both? Um, I would hope to because I would like to go and defend my, my title. Um, definitely like to go and defend my title. Um, I'm really excited. It's going to be a stacked, not just stack year next year, but stack three years. Uh, so, um, you know, I just have to prepare and practice to be able to run. I believe it's World Championships too, and then Commonwealth. Yeah, yeah, to yes, run World I think so. I think so. I, then they're, for the European athletes, they've got their European champs and in and, and there too. So, they're, you know, some of them are dealing with three. The Brits uh, will deal with three. So I'm very curious to see how athletes juggle three big championships in one season. You know, we haven't had that in a long time. Yeah. Um, the um, you've um, how much weight work do you do? Do you do core work as well? Yeah, I definitely do a lot of core work. Um, we lightened up a little bit on the weight room uh, at this point. Um, so right now I'm just, you know, doing stuff like core, um, little exercises here for your smaller muscles, stability stuff here and there, but we don't really lift that much anymore at this point. It's just stuff to, you know, uh, man maintain the body right now. Mm -hmm. The, um, at the end of the season, how much time do you normally take off? Um, it's usually maybe six weeks to two months around there. And when coach brings you back, do you start doing hill work? Is that the first phase that you guys do or a lot of work on the grass? Um, yeah. When I first came here, we did a lot of hill stuff. Uh, we also did a lot of um, grass runs on the field. Um, my first week here actually was like, I actually, I even was training way before training started here. And um, when I went here, my first week, I was very sore. I was fit, but I still was very sore my first week. Yeah. Do, do you, um, how has it been having Wade uh, training with you guys? It's been great, man, because um, I trained with him once when I had a, a, a commitment um, in South Africa uh, with Pali, with Adidas and Pali. And um, I did one workout with Wade and you know, we, we gave knowledge to each other. Um, he's a really good person to, to train with. He's, he, he, he's inspiring. Um, and I mean, we, we, we even spoke about the last time we competed against each other was in the world championships. Um, so it was, it was good to, to train with somebody at, at his caliber and, um, to kind of relive some of the moments that we had at that 2017 world championships. I mean, motivates me every day and I try to do the same. Um, for him. Who is the toughest competitor that you've seen that you've come up against in the 200 meters? Um, toughest competitor. Um, I mean, I would probably say Noah. Noah probably is okay. the toughest competitor. Who's the most underrated 200 guy that you, so you're in a race, and you, you know, you see no, you see others. Is there someone that you see that name doesn't come up in the press much? Uh, probably. Okay, I'll do it this way. Who's the most underrated two hundred meter runner um, that you come up uh, against? That I've uh, went up against. Um, I probably will have to say Kyle. Uh, my teammate Kyle Giroux. Um, uh -huh. Each time, each time we've raced against each other, it's always been uh, a neck-to-neck -neck type of battle, especially in um, the national championships in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, That's cool. We have the same exact PR. Um, definitely, probably one of the underrated um, athletes because he's very, very, very talented and he is a competitor. What is it like to compete in Trinidad and Tobago? Do you get a good crowd for your the meets that you have down there? Uh, um, do they know who you guys are, or how how is the sport uh, received down there? So, 
this is the way I perceive um, track and field in China and Tobago. We have bring back, brought back the most medals in any sport um, back to our home country. Very small twin island republic in the Caribbean. Um, population about maybe 1.5 million. We could fit in any different continent millions of times because we're very, very, very small. Um, but the work that we have done for track and field, uh, I feel like our own country doesn't give us enough credit for it. Um, we still fall probably third place in the ranks of sports to football and cricket. Um, when it comes to support with people coming out into the stadiums for Olympic trials, for um, maybe world championship trials, just like national trials and stuff like that, we only fill up the cupboard stands. Um, not much people. The people that come to watch track is just solely track and field fans. Um, and I mean, sometimes it's sad because they only really know you when you do something big. Like the average average people in Trinidad and Tobago only recognize you when, hey, that's the guy that just won a medal. Yeah. Um, they, 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 most people are not there along the journey when, okay, this person looking like they're in good shape going into the Olympics or going into the world championships. Um, so the support, it could be better. Um, but I mean, that with time, hopefully it, it, it could get to a point where they realize that your know, track and field has done a lot for my home country, Trinidad and Tobago over the years. Um, you just competed in the Adidas Boost uh, Boston. You've competed in all of them, haven't you, on the street? The last um, summer? I'm, my first one was in 2018, so this would have been my thing. Okay, okay. Uh, what do you like about the street meets? Uh, I like the interaction of the um, the street meet, um, being outside, feeling the breeze, um, being elevated from the streets. Um, it's just a great feeling. And even when I was younger, when I started to take um, track and feel a little bit more serious, I um, always used to see, look at the athletes running the street meet. I, I always wanted to run it, always wanted to to, to test my my hands in, 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 this, um, in this meet. And, to be able to do it now, I mean, is a blessing because, I mean, who wouldn't want to run in the streets? Sure. Talk to me about the difference between doing a 200 on with a turn and a 200 straight. Have you had right. to do that? So if you realize I've only done the 200 straight once, it's, and what very, that feel like? very, it's very, very, very long. It is, yeah. it, it, it's long. Um, I think a little advice, if I could have given a little advice, maybe was to put an indicator of where where you are, maybe a hundred meters or maybe a fifty, a fifty sure. meter back. Um, because the only way you could tell um where you are at, it's when your body starts to feel a little bit fatigued and you can say, Well, okay, yeah, I feel like I, I just ran 150 or I just ran 170 around there. But it's very long. It's very long. It's fun, though, but it's a long race. Yeah, no, I, I recall running a couple 10K road races and looking up and going, oh, my God, I got 300 to go. Oh, man, it's just straight. And you're just, you put your head down. You know, it's all, it's all you can do. Um, did you ever do the hurdles? Um, I did the 300 meter hurdles when I was younger, okay. probably under 17 also, and also did the 110s when I was under 17. 110s is definitely one of the most difficult hurdle events, especially if you, like it's your first time doing hurdles and yeah. you have no technique, it is terribly difficult. Why did you choose the, the 200 meters? Um, actually growing up. I was more of a 400 meter runner and I always force, foreseen myself being a quarter miler first. Mm -hmm. And um, I made the World U team in 2011 and my coach at the time, he, um, I made the team for both events, the 400, I ran 47.3 and in the 200, I ran 21.5. 
And I think my world rang going into bull youths, I was probably 12th in the 400. And I was very high up in the 200, maybe 20 something in the 200. And right before we left to go world youths, my coach was like, well, I'm going to put you down in the 200. And I was like, why? I was like, you're not, you're not looking at the odds here. Like, I have a better yeah. chance than before. He was like, well, um, you don't know it yet, but um, you're going to be a better 200-meter runner. Um, he always told me that I'm not built to run rounds in the 400. Um, he was like, don't get me wrong, you can run a fast 400, but you just right now you're not built for the rounds in the 400. I was like, all right. Sure. And I mean, I took his, his advice. Uh, went to World Youth. I think I finished 11th overall. So I just missed out on making a final by a little bit. And um, I PR there. I came back home. I PR in um, our national championships. And the rest was history at that point. Um, I started to realize that I was more or less a better 200 meter runner, but I also had the ability to run a fast 400. Talk to me about the first time in a world championship stadium and what you felt like. Were you nervous um, when you when you got out there? No, I wasn't nervous at all. Um, prior to the world championships in 2017, I've already went to the um, Olympics in um, 2016. I uh, mm -hmm. wasn't able to compete because I was a uh, reserve on the 4x4 really team. And prior to that, I um made the commonwealth games team in 2014 um where i ran the 200 and my experience there was terrible so actually my first commonwealth i got knocked out in the first round went in with a pr of 20.5 and i ran like 21 one in my first round um but i was overwhelmed by the crowd it the, the experience really just got to me when i walked outside and i mean i couldn't even hear myself think it was so loud and and everything I was, I lost focus as soon as I went out on the track and ran terrible and I was disappointed. And I just told myself, you know what, I mean, things like this need to happen for you to gain experience. So the next time that you're on the big stage, you're not overwhelmed or you're not surprised by the, the level of competition or the crowd that's around you or anything like that. So um, I would say my life itself built up to um, 2017, whereas where I went and I saw the crowd there, it was very, very much normal. I was able to catch myself and focus and, you know, realize that I came out here to compete and not to get sucked up in the everything around me. Sure. I mean, the uh, my first Commonwealth Games was in 14. And okay. I love Glasgow, although it was cold. It was and cold. I, you know, oh, my gosh, in the rain and stuff. I, I also played a, a number on the the Scottish press, I told them that uh, the Americans are trying to get back into the Commonwealth Games because we, you know, we, were, we had been a, and people bought it, man, for a couple of days. So, you know, you got to have some fun once in a while. But um, the, uh, did you ever see Eddie Murphy's movie Coming to America? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, so, you know, the country is the Mundo that they have there? Mm -hmm. All right, so some of the guys, uh, some of the guys in another brand, convinced me that there was a team for Zamundo. I'd never seen the movie and they were setting me up to an interview with the four by one for Zamundo. Right. And yeah. This went on for a year and a half until I told my son and he just shook his head and he said, dad, time to watch Eddie Murphy. Come on. You know? So, you know, every once in a while on Twitter, I put out, Hey, I'm going to interview the Zamundo and four by one team. You know, you got to find a, a, a fake fun country and stuff like that. <laughs> Let's talk about TTO and the four by four and what it meant for you guys to crank on the U S team. Is that something that you planned out for a long time or did you just go, Hey, look, this is our shot. We're going to put it all together. Um, I feel like it was a long time coming because yeah, it was beautiful. Medal, I mean, they yeah. medaled in, um, they medaled in 2012 in the Olympics. Um, then they will find a listen 13, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, in 14, they got third in Commonwealth. In 15, they got second behind the U.S. in a very tight ish race. Yeah, yeah. Um, in 16, we got disqualified in the first rounds. But we still had basically that same exact team that was there throughout that same period from 2012. Um, mm -hmm. and in 17, 
everyone wasn't in the best of shape, um, but everyone was ready to run a relay. Um, and going in after we ran the first rounds and we saw what other people ran and how the US looked, um, going forward, forward, we was we all came together with the coach and we spoke about it and we was like, well, we have a chance of winning this. And we all thought that the only way we could win it is if we get it in a close second. If it was anywhere ahead, if we got it in first place, we didn't think that it would have happened. But it's yeah. always nice to get the baton in a close second. And yeah. exactly how we thought the race would have um, went off, it went off the same exact way. Everyone did their part and did exactly what they needed to do. And when it happened, I remember watching um, Lalon Gordon when he hit the 200 meter mark. And I was like, the way he was running, you could tell that he just waiting to, waiting to kick. I was yeah. like, I feel like we could win this. But then I didn't want to count my eggs before they hatch. So I was like, I hope you have it. I was like, you know what, worst case scenario, second place medal. But then I just seeing him setting it up, setting it up, setting it up, setting it up. And on the home street, when I see him passing, I was like, like, I feel like, uh, I feel goosebumps. And it was so unreal when he crossed the line, he beat his chest. And it was like, we finally take home one. We finally yeah. able to take down the U.S. after so many years. Um, the last team to do it was the Bahamas in the Olympic Games. Um, it's a great feat. And once again, a small, small country, Trinidad and Tobago, 1.5 million people. Like there, that's not a lot of people. Uh, places like the U.S. have millions to, to come from. They could, have, they could have four or five really teams that would have made the finals in different pe- with different people. You know, so... Uh, when I think about that, I mean, it's a great, great, great achievement. Um, words can't explain. Like, that was the icing on the cake for me at that point. I already had my individual medal. And then to add a gold to it, too, it was like, like yeah. wow, mind-blowing. Um, that's why when I go back and think about, um, you know, the way we support uh, track and field and Trinidad and Tobago, I feel like the, the regular public, the general public doesn't really understand what we actually do and how much this actually means. Like, this is something big yeah. to become a world champion in, in the 4 by 4 or to win our world championships because in these events, there's only eight people can make the final. So you're the best in the world, you know? Um, but yeah, it was... It, it, words can explain how, how that feeling is to become a world champion, to compete at that level, to hear the crowd roaring and cheering for you. Like, it didn't feel like it was just for Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. It felt like it was for the Caribbean. You know, because oh, yeah. we got love from each Jamaica, Bahamas, Barbados, like every Caribbean brother and sister came together and was like, you know, you all really gave us hope that this is possible. You all really did a really good job right here. You know, so it was it was a great feeling because it wasn't just for, for us. It wasn't just for our country, but it was for the Caribbean too. What did Otto Bolden say to you? Did you get a chance to talk to him afterwards? Did, um, did we get to I talk to him about it? I don't think we we got to speak to him. Um, speak to him um, after that race. We spoke to a lot of people in the media, but I can't recall um, speaking to him after that race. Yeah, because he did some stuff on US TV. He was so proud of you guys, and he and, and he, he did a couple. I mean, I saved it on YouTube. He did a couple things just showing how well race you did, how you guys didn't make any mistakes, how you put it all together. And I, I just thought that that's what the Olympics to me are all about. And the world champs are all about, man. And it's just, you know, you, especially in the four by four, you put four together. It doesn't matter if it's from a big country or a small country. And if you are the best, you are the best. And that is so cool. So, you know, yeah. but, uh, and, and I, and I really enjoyed in 17 watching you get the 200 medal. Uh, cause I know that was a big deal for you. You did a really yeah. nice interview. I thought after that, um, how do you deal with the press? Do you enjoy doing interviews? Is it kind of weird sometimes? Um, how, what's it like for you? Um, when I was younger, when I just started doing interview interviews, it was really weird. Um, 
now having the experience doing a lot of interviews anyway, I realized that, you know, it's more of a conversation because when I was younger, I felt a little bit pressured into uh, speaking to someone. I didn't want to say the wrong thing. Um, and then I just learned that it's, a, it's basically a conversation between me and you. So I embrace the press um, and I've learned skills in terms of what to say, um, sure. how, to, how to get your point across. Um, I mean, even avoiding some questions that you probably didn't want to answer, but you still have to, you know, answer yeah. because it's asked. Um, so, yeah, I deal with it pretty well, though. No, I think you do great. All right, so I'm going to ask, I'm going to give you five athletes' names and uh, up to five words, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Usain Bolt. Legend. Okay. Um, Wade Vanekert. Um, I'll say persistent. Okay. Noah Lyles. What? Confident. Shawnee Miller Weebo. Classy. The TTO 4x400 team. Greatness. There you go, man. That's awesome. And would you just say that? Uh, so, how many national records did you set this year? I just want to make sure that uh, uh, Spencer knows. <laughs> uh, so, so far, so far, only one. That's okay. one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so you're, uh, you've run so well over the 200. You've run awesome 400 legs. Is your perfect distance 250 or is it 300 or is it 200? I honestly, this is a hard one. If I had to choose perfect distance for me, I yeah. really love 250. Like, Cool. 250 for me is just right. Um, I would like to run an outdoor 300 if I ever get the opportunity to. Um, maybe one year in Australia because I know they they have it for sure. They maybe do it. And they do it. They, yeah, they put it. I mean, they put a good field together. And I'm just trying to think. There's a, some of the small Scandinavian meets do too, but Ostrava, that's you know, that's where Usain ran. That's where I think Wade ran. We, yeah, it's a, yeah, it could be a lot of fun. Jareen, uh -huh. you've done awesome today. Thank you. You survived uh, 40 whole minutes with me, you know, and and uh, um, it's been really fun. And I look forward to seeing you in Tokyo. I wish you the very best. I'd love you. to Thank see you, you improve on your medal. And I want your four by four guys to do well, you know, well. But, you know, I have a place, too, for another four by four team. But, uh Thank you again for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. You're no awesome. All right. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run, socialing the distance. We had Dream Richards, an Adidas sponsored athlete. He is a Commonwealth Gold 200 meter from uh, 2018. He's the bronze medals from the World Champs in 2017 at 200. His team won gold in the 4x4 four four in 2017. And they're going to be tough and hungry this year in Tokyo. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. All right. Bye. All right. Hey, sports fans, Larry, to run, blog, run. This is your favorite pro program, Social in the Distance. This week, we had Trinidad and Tobago's Jareem Richards. Uh, Jareem's won the gold medal in the 2018 uh, Commonwealth Games at 200 meters. He won the bronze medal, his first big individual medal, in London 2017. And he was on the gold winning four by four team from Trinidad who defeated the U S in London, 2017, um, tremendous athlete. And, uh, recently just set the one fifty national record for Trinidad and Tobacco at the Adidas boost Boston games. Um, dream is a 200 meter runner, although he's done, uh, the hundred he's done the 400 he's done the 300. He's done the high jump. He's done the long jump. Um, and he's best at that since the end of the season in 2020. He's been training with Lance Brownman in Claremont. He had gotten stuck for eight months back in TTO and was literally a couple blocks from his house doing repeats on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays up a hill uh, because the stadium wasn't open. And 
uh, Trinidad and Tobago is still having a very tough time with um, uh, COVID-19. So he's staying in, put in Florida. Um, there'll be a selection process and then there'll be some races that he will run to show his fitness level. But uh, he's run, I believe, eight races already this season. Looked really good over 100, 200. And then also he did an indoor 300. Um, I really like his attitude. Uh, he is a student of the sport. He's training with Josephus and Noah Lyles and Wade Vandekirk and uh, Nathan Neal um, and, a, a, you know, several others from the, the Pure Athletics uh, Club. So uh, Adidas sponsored athletes training in Florida. Um, but it looks like Tareem's ready for another medal contention in Tokyo. Um, and he'll be tough over 200 meters. He just knows how to come off that turn and really run it. Um, and I'd love to see him get a silver medal. I think it could be fascinating, but I think he's got the wheels to do it. How good is his four by four right now? Uh, many of them have been there since 2012. So it'll be interesting to see whether it's the veteran shape that picks up a medal are the new speedsters. So we'll have to see what happens there. But Jareem, it was a fun interview. Uh, I think you can learn a lot about 200 meter guys and um, just the attitude you have to have to compete at the world class level in athletics. It's a tough, tough sport and people don't get it. Day in, day out, you've got to be a professional. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run, Socialing the Distance. We featured Adidas sponsored athlete Dream Richards, the 2018 Commonwealth Games gold medals to 200 meters, the London 2017 bronze medals to 200 meters, as well as gold medals, the 4x4. Four four. And he will be in Tokyo in the 200 and the 4x4, four four, uh, competing for Trinidad and Tobago. Again, Larry Eater signing off. If you like us, like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you love us, subscribe on the uh, YouTube channel and uh, see all 2,500 plus of our videos and audios. Larry Eater signing off.